we ask that as we study about the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we might understand that you have given your Holy Spirit to live within us and our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Help us to be conscious of that. And Father, we thank you that he lives within us. And he is strengthening us, he's directing us, he's guiding us. He will even show us things yet to come. So our relationship with him is very important. And I thank God I can testify tonight that I am and I have always been aware of the Holy Spirit directing me and guiding me. And I thank you, Lord. Each person here tonight that has really been walking in the Spirit, they know. And if they're walking in the Spirit, they have love for the brethren. They have love for the lost people. Father, we thank you that we can pray for those that persecute us, that say all manner of things against us. Blessed are we when men say all kind of things against us. We are blessed. And we thank you, Lord, that we can bless them. And knowing that as we bless them, God will bless us. And we thank you now that as our hearts are open to receive the word of God, we will learn and become more like Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So everybody got it? Let's start reading. You had some? Oh, you want one of these? No. What you got? Oh, you got something you want to say? One little quick thing. Yeah, go ahead. Come on up. Yeah, we got some up here. Make sure that... You got two of them uh, back there? Give uh, Doris one. Yeah, get those, uh, yeah, take two up there, yeah. Yeah, take a couple up there. Everybody, who, who needs another one? You got one, Doris? You got one? Okay. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, I'll fix it. Yeah, there you go. Testing. One, two. Testing, one, two. <laughs> no, I just, uh, the other night I was putting my little one to bed, and I walked away from her for just a few moments there. She, fe she fell asleep really quick, but um, she kind of blurted out, you know, real exciting kind of, the angel, that's what she said, or, or I don't know if she said there's the angel or something of, to that degree, I didn't, you know, I was kind of far away from her, but that made me start thinking, thinking <laughs> about, about angels and what, you know, what they do, what, what's going on, so I've been, I've been, I've been digging through some material Good. for the last couple of days, and um, I guess hopefully maybe when I compile it and put it together, maybe I can come back and share some of my findings. That's all I wanted to say. So maybe in a, in a few weeks or so, I can share some of my findings, what I've been, because I'm, I'm, since she said that. You're preparing that, that, that a lesson? Kinda, that kind of made me start digging into the angels and, yeah. and what, what their role is and what's Ministering going on. Ministering spirits of the right, right, heirs right, of right. salvation. Amen. So just wanted to say that. Okay. And, and maybe so you're saying you get, you're going, you'll have a message for us? Oh, yeah, I think I might. Okay, just let me know. I think I might. <laughs> let me know. Okay. Yes, sir. My job is to perfect you for the work of the ministry. All right, let's go ahead, and I appreciate you sharing that tonight. Okay, are we ready up there? Let's go with it. The loving Holy Spirit, he loves you dearly. He's a person. The third person of the Trinity. One God, 
that manifests himself in three distinct persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Many people today are scared of the Holy Spirit. They fear that they have done the unpardonable sin and are forever enemies of the, of the third person of the Godhead. This is a lie from the pits of hell, and the devil knows it. The Holy Spirit cares for us and loves us dearly. We are precious to him. And there are many scriptures to give us an insight into the loving nature of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and prompted me to write this teaching about how much he loves us. Turn to page number two. And about his loving nature towards us. Now let me say that it, sometimes it's hard for us to understand the sequence of things, but God's on the throne up there. How many know that? And who is seated on the right hand side of the Father? Jesus. Jesus. In his resurrected body, a man, a man is seated up there at the right hand side of the Father. Okay? But Jesus said, I must go that the Holy Spirit might come down and live within us. So we know that the Holy Spirit is also the Spirit of Christ. So Christ lives in us by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Christ in our heart is our only hope of glory. So the Holy Spirit lives within us. Now we're not talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's a different experience for power that you can be a witness. But we're talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brought us to Christ. He's the one that brought us to Christ. And Christ brings us to the Father. All this is in the Scripture. When I speak, I'm speaking what's in the Scriptures. I wish we had time to share every Scripture. But I assume that you know the Bible and you've been reading it. So you can say amen what I'm saying. I believe it will be a rich blessing to anybody who struggles with fears of the imparable sin. The Holy Spirit wants to make us in God's image. Bob, what is God going to do in 2016? The same thing he's been trying to do in 2015. Bring us all, change it, and listen to this, change us from glory to glory. How? Somebody tell me how. You know the word. By His Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, I think it is. So He's changing us by the Holy Spirit. Inwardly, the inner man. The inner man's been created. He's a new creation. He's brand new. And, and, the, and the Holy Spirit is working. Now, God allows us to go through different things on the earth. Many difficult things to find out how we're going to act or react, okay? Some people want me to take all their burdens away. You won't grow. Hello. <laughs> Somebody wave at me. <laughs> wave at me over there. <laughs> no, whatever you're going through, listen to me. Whatever that you're going through, it's a test to see how you're going to act and react. But if God has done that work in you, you will react like Jesus did. Hello? Amen. How we doing? Amen. How we doing? <laughs> Boy, sometimes I react ugly, don't you? How many ever act re uh, Come on, don't lie to your pastor. <laughs> oh, but see, I, I say, God, forgive me. Now, remember this. When you read the story of Joseph, uh, the last chapter, I think it's in Genesis 50. He said to his brothers, to them, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Hello? Amen. So some things that come against us is to show us what we need to be purified of. It ain't, we're not talking about heaven and hell here. We're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit that brought us to Christ and is now in the process of working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. 
So we must understand that. So no need to get up all uptight and, and, and you're just going to give up. No, no, that's what the devil would have you to do. This is how you learn how the Holy Spirit operates in you when you cooperate with him, when you're in a tough time. Are you going to throw in the towel? Or are you going to say, Lord, I can go through this by your strength. Okay? And I've preached that for years, but some people just haven't learned it yet. But I'm a patient man. All right, now, the Holy Spirit wants to make us in whose image? God's image. Jesus Christ's image. Let's start at the beginning. When God made man in his image, they, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit said, let us make man in our image. The Holy Spirit al along with the Father and Son. Now notice that in, in, in Genesis. Let us. Let us. Who's us? Think it through now. Huh? Trinity. That's right, the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost. See, many people don't catch that, but as you grow and revelation comes, we see that the, 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 the Godhead, the Trinity, from the very beginning. Now, here's the beautiful thing about it. The Holy Spirit was hovering over the earth, and it was dark. It was out without form. But something else had to happen before something really happened. Who can tell me? God spoke. God spoke. That's what we have to do as the Holy Spirit hovers over us. We have to speak the word of God. Very important to see and very important to understand. And this should become a way of life to you. Anything that comes against me, I constantly begin to say, Father, thank you that through this experience, I will be conformed a little bit more into the image of the Son of God. Okay? All right, let's finish reading a little bit here. <clears throat> Wants to make you and I in his image and give us dominion over all other uh, all other creation here on earth and you'll find this passage in the first chapter of Genesis and here it is Genesis 126 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness now when you read the scriptures and you understand the word of God when Adam had children I'm, I'm not, not, not talking about uh, Abel and Cain, but it says there in the fifth chapter, I think it is in Genesis, they were born in his image, in Adam's image. Hello? Very important you see that. That's why Christ came and caused us to be born again. We became new creatures in Christ. To, to bring us back into the image of our Heavenly Father. Now, in our conduct, in our attitudes, all of that, He is working that we will be like He is. God is love. So He sheds His love in our hearts. How? How? By the Holy Spirit. So the love of God is in our heart now. The natural man does not have the agape love in him. You scratch my back, you treat me right, I'll treat you right. But a man of God that has the Spirit operating, directing him, and he's living in the Spirit, totally will act and react differently than the natural man. Okay, I wish we had time to get into the scriptures. You'll see the natural man in, in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 1, 2, and 3, all about the natural man. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. It's the spiritual man that receives the things of the Spirit. Okay? Let me drink a little water here.
That was for my natural man. This is for my spiritual man. <coughs> Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. It was the Holy Spirit who sent Jesus to heal and, to, and restore us. If you turn to Luke chapter 4, you will find that it was the precious Holy Spirit who sent Jesus forth to minister healing, deliverance, and restoration to us. Let us look at this passage in the Bible. Turn to page three. It's found in Luke 4, 18 and 19, Willie. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now here's the way I read that. I say amen to that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon the shield of faith, upon Bob, upon Missy, upon Linda, upon each and every one of us, to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, back in the old days when the farmers was coming along, and I'm talking about way back in early 1900s and before that, families had a lot of kids. <laughs> How many of you know that? <laughs> they had a lot of kids because those kids did the work on the farm. Okay? Well, God has a lot of kids to do His work on His farm down here on the earth. Okay? So we've been created for our pleasure. Huh? I missed that? For whose pleasure? Okay, now you remember that. You know, sometimes we just think we're living for our pleasure. Come on, church, don't shout me down now. We have to keep in mind who created us, okay, and, and for what purpose. All right, those wonderful things listed in the verse above where the where the desire of the Holy Spirit for us. And he sent us Jesus to minister that healing, freedom, and restoration unto us. It was the Holy Spirit who empowered Jesus to go about healing all who were oppressed of the devil, raise the dead, and heal the sick. It is that same Holy Spirit who empowered us today to go forth and to do the same. Look at Acts 10.38 now. Acts 10, 38 on the board. And God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. People say, well, why don't we see some of that today? Well, in my ministry, in my lifetime, I've seen some things. I've seen people healed. I've seen people healed from uh, many different things, from emotional damage lives. But let me say something here. I think it was, might, have been, might have been my brother over here, Spencer, that was sharing about the disciples when Jesus was coming through Samaritan. The Samaritans didn't want Jesus to come through their property. You know, go around if you're going to Jerusalem. Don't come through here. Well, that teed off the disciples. You could see that they weren't exactly uh, in the image of the Jesus yet. <laughs> Master, you want us to send some fire down here and just wipe all of them off? <laughs> and Jesus says, you don't know what spirit you are of. How many has ever felt like that? the disciples? Come on, church. <laughs> Lord, just... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we all experienced that negative, but now we know what spirit we are of if we still see it that way. 
Or if we see that we have to be patient, and the Word of God spells that out so simply that the man of God, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, 25, 26, must be patient and kind and gentle. Be patient with those that are... What would that be? <laughs> Still walking in the flesh. <laughs> That's what the Lord said we're to be. Patient, kind, gentle. Per adventure, God will give them repentance unto the truth. Are y'all out there? Who's that back there? That's our guard. You got your gun ready in case somebody comes to the door. <laughs> you remember what you learned in the, in, in the Navy, that karate punch? <laughs> we might have to do that one day. Put a couple guards back out there. All right. We will save ourselves a lot of problems and trouble by letting the Lord change us from glory to glory. How? By the Spirit of God. You must understand, you and I cannot change anybody, because if I could, I would change Bob Tilton. <laughs> if I could change all of you guys, you'd have been changed. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is so kind and gentle that he works with us as we yield to him. As long as you're holding on to your, as long as I'm holding on to my garbage, he can't put nothing in our hand because we hold it on to the negative. But when you let it go, when you cast all your cares upon Jesus, then he can put something good in your hand. But he's perfecting us. He's working in us. And he's making us willing to turn that garbage loose where we can receive the blessings of God. Hello, church. Are you out there? All right. All right, look at the next one. The Holy Spirit is our advocate and the intercedes for us. He is so important. And we are to, we are to be aware of Him working. We are to be aware that He's interceding for us right now. That's powerful. See, as you become aware of him, he becomes more, you'll see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit more in your life when you begin to give him the glory and the praise for what he's doing and you acknowledge what he's doing. It's exciting. All right, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as our comforter. Look at this passage in the Bible. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, turn the page of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit is the same Spirit. Okay, the King James had ghost. Most translation has changed the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God Himself. The word comforter in this verse comes out of the Greek word parakleto, which means an intercessor, consoler, advocate, comforter. The Holy Spirit is not only our comforter, but also an intercessor, consoler, an advocate. Let us take a brief look at each one of these properties. Now let me say something. Jesus says you have not because you ask not. 
We should be talking to the Lord and the Holy Spirit all day long. Lord, I feel bad. I really need some strength here. I can hardly keep my eyes open. I'm so tired. Well, the Bible says that he can, he'll give us strength. So have you learned to talk to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, you are my strengthener. I need your strength. And it's by faith. Okay? Before I come over here, notice I'm 82 years old. Look at the energy I got. You know why I have it? Because I know how to tap into the Holy Ghost, how to tap into his strength. I'd be dragging like everybody else sometimes is dragging. You say, well, you know, Bob, you haven't worked all. Uh, wait a minute. I've, <laughs> I've been, you, you don't know my past. I've worked all day long and came in here with the power of the Holy Spirit because I learned to draw from the well of the Holy Ghost. Okay, not fussing, but I'm just punctuating some things that if you're going to win the war, because what's going to happen is if we don't, we'll end up backsliding. Because you say it don't work. Yeah, it don't work because you're working in your own power or the not you guys. I know you're, you've learned to work in the power of the Holy Ghost. But I'm talking about people in general. Remember, this message goes around the world through the Internet. So we're not just talking to you. We're talking to people out there who don't even know about the Holy Spirit. Okay? So we've got to remember, what well, we have <clears throat> great potential. Just think you have God Almighty to help you every moment of the day. But where is your mind? What are you thinking about all day? I'm not scolding. I'm just asking. You know what you're thinking about all day. Are you thinking about that which edifies you? What somebody did or didn't do? You're going down. Don't shout me down now. You know I'm telling you the truth. I've had to overcome those things. Thank God for the overcoming power of the Holy Spirit, you know? Okay, let's go for this thing now. Look, an intercessor is somebody who intercedes on our behalf. Wow, he's interceding. Now, you have not because you ask not. How many of you, now be honest with me, you've asked the Holy Spirit to intercede for you today? All right, we got one back there, we got one there, got two people. Not fussing at you, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you the potential that's waiting on you throughout the day to ask the Holy Spirit to intercede, to comfort you. There's times I'll lay down on the floor, I say, Lord, I need your strength. I ask you to strengthen me right now. By faith, I receive your strength, Father. And I get up in the strength of the Lord because I believe. I speak what I believe. Did I share that one time before? Where's that found? I speak what I believe. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, I think it is. Yeah. Mm hmm. Don't speak what you feel because you're going down, baby. Come on, church. Don't shout me down now. Come on now. I'm preaching here. Oh, my goodness, this is supposed to be a teaching. Say, I speak what I believe. I believe that God's for me. Mm-hmm. Put on the board Psalms 138, verse 1, real quick, like. You know, our confession, I, we, 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 we've been preaching about confessing the Word of God for so long. Look at that scripture. It's even in the Old Testament. Everybody look at the board. Psalms 138, verse 1. I will, what? Confess. confess. What? That I'm pooped. <laughs> and you get what you speak. I will confess and I will praise you, O God, with my whole heart. 
Before the gods or evil powers of darkness will I sing praises to you. I will confess that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I will confess that God is greater than all other powers that come against me. I confess. You say, well now, Bob, you're just talking about positive thinking. No, I'm telling you the word of God. The psalmist says, I will confess that if God be for me, who can be against me? You got to hear it. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing. Notice the first, you got saved. If I will, what? If I will, what? What's that word? If I will, what? What, What's that word? Ah, I will confess with my mouth that if the Lord is for me and with me, who shall I fear? Nobody. I will confess that I have confidence over here. <laughs> get out here. Oh, my confidence is shot. I get back over here. Oh, in, under the covering. I can't remember the word, but over here in Christ. What's the word? Right, baton or whatever. Baton. Uh, that stuck with me. That message stuck with me. <coughs> Do you have confidence that the Lord is with you? Yes. Are you confident that God will never leave you? Yes. Are you confident that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? Yes. Are you confident? If God be for you, who can be against you? Yes. I speak what I believe. And Paul said, just like David, that's what David did, the king of Israel. And I speak what I believe. Because I tell you what, life and death is in, it, 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 the life and death is in the power of the foot. Life and death is in the power of the little tongue. Ain't you glad you got a big tongue? (laughs) Life and death is in the tongue. Now, there's a time and place that you'll cross over Jordan. You'll cross over to realize that the Holy Spirit of God God who created the universe lives in you and me. We're not alone. The Holy Spirit lives in me. And our bodies are the temple of God. Are you ignorant of that fact, Paul says? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Ah, thank you, Jesus. Wow. That's why, I, <clears throat> I think I said it's Sunday. Connect it with somebody that's walking in that. Because you're not walking in that, I guarantee you, you'll drift, you'll drift away. Well, you know, I'm only drifting just a little bit. Yeah, I know it's a little bit right here, but you go a thousand miles and you way off. Every day you have to bring your mind under your control. You have, we have got to learn to think. Think on what is good and honest and noble. Because there's sometimes I don't feel like getting out of bed. Man, this is wonderful. Back to this cold weather. Since to me, we go around the house thanking God all day long. We in the house and it's warm in here. Thank you, Je- It's just thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First thing I get up in the morning, I say, Holy Spirit, thank you for the good night's sleep. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for life. Thank you, you're guiding me and directing me this day. Thank you, Lord, you're going to open the Word of God. I thank God we could spend two or three hours in the Word of God. Now, as soon as we just jump in the pool, we swim for two or three hours in the Word of God. 
I remember the time when it wasn't that way, but I always carried my little Bible with me. And when I went to the uh, bathroom about 20 times a day, <laughs> I could read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> Come on, smile at me now. Don't be, have that good attitude of friendliness. It draws that good spirit out of me. All right, church, here we go. Romans 8, 26, 28. Likewise, everybody look at it now. I want you to look at the Word of God. Okay, look at the Word. You got it right there? Look at the Word of God. It's four. That's why I write these things down where you can see it in your mind. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. Thank you, Lord, you're helping me in my infirmities, in my weaknesses, for we know not what we should pray. Lord, I don't know how to pray for that person. Lord, I believe, Holy Spirit, you're praying and you're showing me how to pray. As we ought. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us. So have you ever just simply said, Holy Spirit, I don't know how to pray for that person. Would you intercede for that person? Say, so you have not because you ask not. If I want something, if I want something from uh, Spencer... I'm standing here. I'm here to, I'm here to help him. If you want me to help you, you got to say, Bob, would you help me? Sure, I'll help you. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the strength of the Holy Ghost in this man. Thank you, Father. He's being changed from glory to glory into the very image of the Son of God. Thank you. Woo! Simple, not complicated. Sometimes I ask Susan, honey, would you put some, pour me some more tea? How many ever does that? You say, she, she wouldn't know. That. Now, she pretty well knows that, don't she? She'll keep it full for you. But I sure like to have another piece of that pie. She does it because I get and I, I, because I ask. See, that's a very powerful, powerful principle asking. You remember the, the, the woman that went to the uh, to the judge and kept bothering him about, you know, getting something and whatever and everything. He said, my goodness, if I don't give that woman what she wants, she'll drive me nuts. And he did it. We ask, Lord, I need your strength. I need your wisdom for this day. Lord, I need the crisis attitude in this situation. I need your love to be manifested between me and my brother. Lord, I need you, oh Lord, to strengthen me this day. You learn to do that. When Susan and me gets in the car, we pray. Lord, thank you, Father, for the safe trip. Thank you, Lord, that as we go out, that you would lead people across our path that we can witness to and share the word of God. It becomes a way of life to you. Always communicating with the Holy Spirit, always communicating. And then you depend upon his strength and his guidance. And the day just turns out beautiful. And then you look back and you say, wow, <laughs> Lord, you really did something today. See? Somebody say, I love you, Pastor Bob. You're pushing it, but I love you. <laughs> All right, look at the next one. Consoler is somebody who is there to talk and share your burden with. Webster tells us that to console somebody means to help soothe the, their grief or to comfort them. The Holy Spirit is concerned about what is going on in your lives and wants to help us make it through the difficult times. Now, folks, we think we got it rough now. Some of us might think we have it rough now. Folks, I'll tell you, I hate to tell you, but it ain't going to get no better. Are you a negative man? No. 
difficult times, and the Bible says that in the last days they'll be difficult, but here's the picture. As difficult time comes, God pours his strength into us and we can meet every difficulty that comes our way with cheer and happiness and joy and strength and power, unafraid, because greater is he that is in me than he that is the world. You see the importance of us growing in grace and knowledge? Just think, we have the knowledge to know that if I passed away right now, or you passed away, our loved ones has that knowledge. They know we're with the Lord. That knowledge is power. You know, we take it for granted, and I do too sometimes, but I have to say, Lord, you've given me the knowledge of knowing how to walk. You've given me the knowledge of how to pray for people. You've given me the knowledge, oh Lord, how to conduct myself in every situation. I told Susan the day, I said, honey, if you saw something that you, 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 you couldn't change, what, 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 what would you, what, how would you pray? What would you say to God? And she said, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And who knows the other two? <laughs> the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Now, you know what to do. You see something you'd like to uh, see change. It ain't going to change, but you got to change to be able to live with that thing. But he'll give you the serenity, the strength, the power to endure it. Are you out there, church? Yes. See, we always want circumstances to, uh, to change. No, God don't want us to change many times the circumstance in our lives. He wants us to change our attitude towards it. Are you out there, church? Yes. Shake my hand, brother. You love me? Yes, sir. I'm pushing, though, ain't I? Huh? I'm pushing. <laughs> I'm pushing the curve, right? But how many know I'm speaking truth? Because I can settle one thing for you, and next week it'll be something else. Because that thing inside of us has to be dealt with, and then we realize we've got to conquer regardless of what. Mm hmm. Time is moving fast. I want us to skip five. All that is very good. But I want you to turn over to uh, seven now. Seven. I want to see, show you something in uh, the page seven. See the little number up there. This is in Ezekiel four, uh, 16, 4 and 6. I want everybody to see that. You can put that on the board. And as for thy... Nativity, in the day thy was born, now notice that, this is a picture of a little baby being born and thrown out in the field. They didn't even cut his uh, navel string and he's dying in his own blood. Now get the picture. Born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thy washed in water to supply thee. Thy was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all, cleaned, you know. None I, uh, pit, no, none I pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thy was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person. In the day that thou was born. Now here's a little baby was born. And, and we see that happen in, in our nation today by abortion. Just throw it out in the field like nothing. Just a blob. Now notice this. You see the compassion of God. In that day that thou was born. And when I passed, when God passed by thee. And I saw thee polluted in thy own blood. Now, this is all of us, really. I said, God said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. And that's why we are alive today. 
we were cast into the field. Satan done a number on humanity. That's, that's the, the picture you need to see that we were all in when God passed by and says, you shall not die, you shall live. That shows you the love of God that he has a, to, towards us. I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. And that's why we're alive today. How many sees the picture? That's a humbling experience in it. That's how much God loves us. You will not die, you will live. Because I have spoken it. God is for us. God loves us. I'm convinced the more we understand that God loves us, the insecurity, the fear of this and the fear of that. Perfect love casts out fear. See, when something hits us, sometimes it's not the particular thing of, of that time that shakes our cage. But it's sometimes way back here, two or three or four years ago, that all of a sudden you're like you're reliving that which you feared 10 years ago. You see that, Rick? Because that's still on your, uh, your mind and then you're in there. It's not that that is really shaking you, it's that memory that comes up in your mind. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Very important that we understand that. And so it's not so much to say, oh Lord, deliver me, deliver me from that, but deliver me from that memory of that fear that imparted into me. And every time I go through that experience, I get angry and mad. Very important you understand what I'm preaching, children. We need to understand that. And say, God, thank you that you've delivered me from that. It will not control me. I will not act and react out of past fears that I allowed to enter into my psychic. And when I find myself in that same situation, I want to fight. We were all like that little baby. See, I don't know how much you know in history, but they used to sacrifice babies to their gods. Do you understand that? Yeah. And um, they don't want the child back in those days. They didn't have the tools for abortion as we have today. The child was born, just get rid of it. Throw it out in the field. But God says, live. And we are blessed. We are so blessed today. And the more you concentrate on your blessings, the more you're going to get blessed. I guarantee you, you think of some negative thing that's happened to you in the past, it'll stir your emotion today, and you feel like you're going through the same thing. You react according to that particular thing that's happening right now that you had experienced 10 years ago. Don't shout me down, church, but I'm speaking truth to you. All right. The Holy Spirit wants to make known unto us the things of God. The Holy Spirit is here to teach us about the good things of God and lead us into all truth. I desire truth. I want truth. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, now Jesus is speaking, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Many people have come to me and say, I don't need to come to church. I don't need to uh, do this or that. I don't need to come to Sunday school. The Holy Spirit teaches me everything. Oh, He will and He can. But I tell you what, when you can put yourself under anointing teaching and men and women that have experience, 
You can, he can teach you quicker and you can move quicker and be conformed into the image of the Son of God quicker by people that's been there. And they got experiences, life experiences, of how God brought them out of the Mari clay. What did uh, Joseph say to his brothers? You meant it for evil. And you read that story and you'll probably thank God for every time somebody said something bad to you or just it, things weren't working out. What did you learn? What did you become? Remember the message I preached many years ago. You'll either get bitter or what? Or better. Period. Remember that. That's an eternal law. But it's up to us to get better. Because God causes good to come out of everything, every circumstances, to who? To those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So the next time something happens and it jars your cage, that fear jumps up, of insecurity or rejection you're feeling. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Is that in the scripture? Well, let me see. I mean, I, I'm preaching the word of God. Let's make sure we ain't going to get through this tonight. You know it, but we're working on it. Turn to Matthew 5. Turn to Matthew 5. Look what Jesus said. And we'll close on this. Take this home and read it and study. And we'll go over it perhaps again. I don't know. Matthew 5. Here we go. Let's start with 11. I wish we could start quicker, but the time is run out. We've got five minutes and we'll close. I know all of you are ready to want to go home and eat that pizza. Before you go to bed. <laughs> then you wonder in the morning why you feel like I did. <laughs> All right, are you ready? ready? 11. Bless, happy, who's that? To be envied and spiritually prosperous with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of your outward condition. We must learn to not allow our outward condition or what we're going through to rob us of our joy. But we are blessed, happy. Look what it Are you when people revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account? Are you responding like that? Or what do you do? You got it, too. <laughs> Come on, church. Are we going to live by the word of God or are we going to live by our feelings of what we think? Go to the next verse. Be glad and supremely joyful for your reward in heaven is great, strong, and intense. For in this same way people persecuted the prophets who were before you. Next, you are the salt of the earth, for if salt has lost its taste, its strength, its quality, how can its, salt, its saltness be restored? It is not good for anything any longer but what? But be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. So the Holy Spirit has been given to us to strengthen us in these situations and we've all been some, through some rough times. When I think of Doris and what she's gone through, and yet she's still standing. She got here before and danced in the Spirit before God, celebrating the magnificence of God, praising her Heavenly Father in her spirit with everything in her. I know, I remember, I remember what she went through. I remember the, the, un, the times of un, not knowing, 
not knowing do we understand not knowing where my loved one is and yet God strengthened her we prayed that the comforter would comfort her and Larry and the children she's not bitter she's better and she knows one day she will see her son like I will see my loved ones that have gone see that's the faith that we have that's the promises of God we have a lot to shout about. Happy, happy, happy. Let's go to the next one. You are the light of the world. That's you. That's us. We are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. We are on a hill. <laughs> and the devil sees us, he's going to try to put your light out. He shoots you with some negative thing. Look at the next verse. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a peck, a, a, a measure, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. Don't try to hide your light. Susan and me were talking today. She said, Daddy, you know, I don't like when people look at me and, and, and say that, you know, I'm so good or this or that. I said, honey... Your light is shining. Don't try to hide it. You are a living epistle. All of you are living epistles read by all men that you've been with Jesus. And the devil is coming along to try to put your light out. And after a while, you start back it up. And you sort of hide. You become cowardly. No. God wants to put us on a hill, a beacon. What's the song that we used to sing? The Lighthouse. Oh, I love that song. You remember The Lighthouse? Who remembers The Lighthouse? If it wasn't for The Lighthouse, the ship was coming in. The rocks were all out there. And The Lighthouse was shining bright. And they knew where the port was. They knew how to get into the harbor. We're that lighthouse. Men are walking around in darkness today. That's why when you see somebody that's not saved, and they say something against the word of God, don't get shook up. They blind. And Jesus said something about the blind leading the blind, and they both fall in the ditch. We're not blind. We are light because the Holy Ghost lives in us. I tell you, when Willie back there preaches, I get so excited by his, man, huh? How many get, he, does he get you excited? I mean, he runs over back over here in the, in the canopy, you know, where the confidence is, and he's back out here, and whoa, he's going to come back, you know, huh? <laughs> Aren't we blessed? Say, I'm blessed. Say, I'm blessed when people talk about me. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Great is your reward. God will cause good to come out of it all. Because you're his child. While we were yet in the field, he came by and says, you ain't going to die, you're going to live. Here's a man right here, should be dead. He knows it. He fell back on a Pepsi-Cola bottle. You see Pepsi-Cola bottles, how they break? You got that point on them? Man, if you stepped on that, that went right in his back. I believe it was. Yeah, he's alive. You shall not die, but you shall live, saith the Lord. None of you. We're going to live. We give glory to God. We're going to shine with the light that God's put into us. Say, Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Holy Spirit. Lead me now. All this year. Do your work in me. Change me now from glory to glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope God spoke to your heart.